to Southwell High School and the BBC Young Reporter Team. I am Jacob and I am Sage In our top story, New Kingston there has been a major increase in life crime. For more information, we hand over to Harry and Lucy. Life crime in Kingston of all times has seen a sharp increase this year with an increase of 10.98%. Kingston has seen the fourth largest increase in crime in London behind Redbridge, Harrow and Richmond upon Thames. These crimes include injury, common assault, harassment, murder, possession of an offensive weapon, other violence and wounding grievous bodily harm. Last year there were 17 stabbings of young people in Kingston. Now we have some interviews with some South Wales students about my crime. Over to them. Kingston upon team saw a sharp increase in violent crime this year. What is your opinion on why this has happened? Uh, my opinion is that more younger children are getting influenced by older people or watching more videos. So they don't really know what they're doing because when they get older, they'll most likely do more crimes. Do you think that most of this crime is committed by large gangs and why do you think? Most of this crime is committed by large gangs and why? Yes, because if they're in the gang they're more stronger and they're probably bribing young kids to be in the gang and make them grow up to be in the gang so they become more stronger and more a threat to the community. In our second headline story, Brexit is one of the most important situations in our country at the moment. So here we have our politics report. Brexit Secretary Stephen Barclay and Attorney, Ge and Attorney General Geoffrey Cox will be going to Brussels to discuss the Irish border with, with, and Brexit with EU officials. The Brexit deal will be voted on by the 12th of March. If the deal is rejected, then discussions will be made on whether to continue without a deal. In international news, the Syria crisis is growing by the day. Adam has more on this story. Children who have fled the dominant Islamic State are now in critical condition fighting for their lives. Those who have escaped the tyranny of the so-called IS are now running out of food and water. They have become malnourished and dried out. With nothing to eat or drink for days, they are in the middle of the desert trying to escape the conflict in Syria. Over 3,000 people, mostly women and children, have been reported to emerge. It is said they are close to death, with no utilities nearby, that the smell of feces and urine has become very strong. Pictures have been released of children clutching dirty bags of bread and whatever they can find. There have been many US soldiers and Kurdish fighters that have met them and provided protection camps and shelter for them, for those who are lucky to be in survive. People are going to make a final stand, but nobody knows what will happen come the next few days. Local school news, the amount of exam weeks have gone up. Also, an equality club has started. Over to Seven David. Exam week, good or bad? Here at Southborough High School, we started something called an exam week. This is a week where you complete all your regular exams. We have four a year. We decided to start this so that when we're older, we can cope with our GCSEs slash A level. It gets us used to revising officially for the tests. Um, here is an interview of one of our top students sharing his opinions on the subject. So, how do you feel about exam week? Um, um, I'm not too worried about exam week. We've had two already. I, I don't enjoy them necessarily, but they, they're helping us towards our exams. Um, do you think they're helping you get into a lifestyle where you're used to revising, so when it comes to A-level or GCSE, you'll be more focused? I think so, because our school's been improving with our exam results a lot, and I think this will help us improve a lot more. Would you say that because of the revision timetable that you get based on the exams, have you been excelling more in your exams, more than last year? Um, I had an exam table the first exam week, but I forgot to make this previous one, Say my grades, my grades were as good. I could have got a bit more with an exam time to Okay, thank you. That'll be all. In Southport High School, we have an equality group that focuses on equality for all. They host weekly meetings and debate, discuss, and consider how they believe they can improve world equality. We interviewed Philip and Ben, two members of the equality club. So, Philip, what does equalities mean to you? Equalities means to me is everyone working together. Nobody's higher than another person. It's like a clock. All pieces work together and nobody's higher than another. How do you think this club can help? Equalities Club 
bring people together, they'll say what's if they have any issues. Our local young enterprise team, Iris, is hard at work. We met with Ruben, the sales director. So here I'm joined with Ruben, one of the members of the young enterprise team. Hey. So Ruben, what is the product for this year? So we've sourced a pair of headphones. When you flip out one of the headphones, they become speakers. Wow. So we think they're really great. Uh, they're Bluetooth connectivity. You can wire them up to your phone. Um, and they, they come at quite a, quite a good price, which is good. And what are you looking forward to the most in terms of the competition? Uh, we're really looking forward to uh, learning how to develop our own business. Obviously, it can be quite challenging since none of us have ever, have ever done it before. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to uh, d discussing the issues around that and dealing with problems as they arise. And how have the trade fairs gone so far? Uh, so they've gone really well. We sold a lot to members of the public and to other, other schools. We also got a prize for having a good sales team in our last, last trade fair at Eden Wharf in Kingston. So we're very pleased with that. Alright, thank you, Ruben. Thank you. In more business news, the system responsible for allowing customers to use cash is at risk of falling apart. The government is doing everything in its power to ensure that cash remains as a viable currency. For example, the government proposed, proposes that rural shops use cashbacks. As of now, debit card usage has become substantially more favourable and more popular than regular cash transactions. Research referred to as access to cash reviews gathered 100 pieces of evidence of cash degeneration from businesses and charities alike. The evidence shows that, but, that since 2017, debit card transactions have surpassed that of regular cash transactions, which could mean that this dec decline of cash would mean that by 2026, cash would be irrelevant. However, this degradation would help companies to simplify their paying methods towards their patrons. After being transplanted with blood stem cells, a patient presented re-emission, a temporary dementia of the disease, from HIV. However, this is not the first case as the Berlin patient, Timothy Ray Brown, had re-emission from cancer. The lack of the CCR5 gene means that the protein the HIV virus needs is absent, meaning it can't access the cells, although some HIV variants can latch on to the CXCR4 gene. We currently do not know if this is a cure or just a re-emission. In technology news, a tiny Neptune moon has been spotted by Hubble and it may have broken from a larger moon. Astronomers have called it the moon that shouldn't be there. After a year of analysis, a team of planetary scientists using NASA's Hubble Space Telescope has at last come up with an explanation for this mysterious moon around Neptune. They discovered it with Hubble in 2018. In other news, Real Madrid were knocked out of the Champions League by underdogs Ajax last night. It has not come as a surprise to many, as, long as Los Blancos have been in a poor run of form this season. Real Madrid, who have won consecutive Champions League titles for the last three years, did not have the strongest of lineups, with Sergio Ramos having a red card and Bale not being in good terms with the club. Ajax showed an array of fantastic pieces of attacking play and scored some brilliant goals. Now for the hockey. So Everton men are still took off the Premiership title but their superior goal difference advantage was reduced by nine others. Surbiton beat Holcomb at Sudgeton Road. 4-1. The score was 4-1. The scores were Arden Drayton Charno got two, and David Goodfield got one, and also Hayden Burks for Surbiton. This is the entertainment news. The fictional character Momo, which has alleged to have the f encouraged children to self-harm, has been described as a hoax. The viral internet hoax is actually a sculpture that was put on display in Tokyo three years ago. The sculpture titled Mother Bird was made up by the artist Kaisu Aizawa for the Japanese special effects company Link Factory. The name Momo does not appear to have any link to the sculpture and the original artist has nothing to do with the hoax that went viral. Police appealed to parents to ensure that they know what their children can access online, tell their children no one has the right to make them do anything they do not want to do, use parental controls to keep children safe and ensure children understand the importance of not giving personal information to anyone they do not know. We spoke to Mr Sanders and Miss Law to get their views on Momo. 
about Momo? Momo is quite concerning for uh, young people and parents, also for educators. It uh, seems that it's a tool that's been used to intimidate young people and to challenge young people into doing things that might put them in a position of uh, decreased or reduced safety. Um, what do you think parents should do about it? As with all things online safety, I think it's really important to monitor what young people are looking at online. Obviously, YouTube has become a real source of entertainment for young people. It's a YouTube channel, watching other people play games. And this is where Momo seems to have been hacking into, even into programs as young as Peppa Pig, so really young students. Uh, also recently found out WhatsApp has been used to present the Momo challenges, um, which is really, really worrying. I think it's important for parents to maintain an open relationship with their children, with their mobile phones and to ensure that they are the ones in control of their young person's usage, so that the young person isn't hiding things on their mobile phone. Um, there are obviously parental locks that you can put onto things like phones. You can suggest that young people might not be utilising certain types of social media, or if it's more prevalent, it's more active on those types of social media. Um, but really it's just about making sure that they are watching what's happening, but also that they're talking to the young people so that they're explaining that this is just a scam. This is not an individual person. It's coming from a long way away. Nobody's identifying who they are. They're not taking responsibility for it. So it's a scam that they should just ignore, not use those sites that it's coming from. It's coming from a particular YouTube channel. Don't use that YouTube channel anymore. But to understand that it is a scam. Um, so what do you think about Momo? Well, all I've seen about Momo is um, I've read some articles in the paper because obviously I'm very old. So Momo is something that hasn't come into my frame of reference, as I would call it. Um, but I have seen articles about Momo. Um, I think it's quite terrifying, especially if it's primary school children. Um, I do remember when my son was at primary school and Slender Man was a thing. And I do remember my son being quite frightened about Slender Man. Um, so I find it quite worrying that there's um, this kind of slender man type thing doing exactly the same thing again and asking kids to do quite horrendous things yeah. uh, what do you think parents should do about it um i think parents should put parental guidance locks on everything i try and make sure that we do all the parental guidance for uh, the tv his phone the internet good afternoon everybody i am here outside southborough high school underneath the clouds it is 13 degrees this morning at its highest peak as later we will have clouds all day with a cloudy night. With temperatures at 12 degrees and lowering, this week we will have higher temperatures and 10 degrees and rising as this weekend is a sunny Saturday and we will have high 14 degrees. That's all from us in South Rohai and the BBC Young Reporters. Goodbye. Thank you.